If you thought Mercedes AMG models were all power and no precision, you need to drive the C63 AMG, these days available in coupe form, as well as in saloon and estate guise. A huge burbling V8 that plays an exhilarating soundtrack is the kind of thing you'd expect, but class leading handling prowess may come as more of a shock. AMG has finally come of age. Here's where it ends. You started with a warm hatch, perhaps something like a Citroen DS3. As times got better, you graduated on to a Volkswagen Golf GTI. And from there, further to something more sophisticated, say, an Audi S3. And it's all brought you to this point, the pinnacle of the performance car tree, the Gucci of GTIs. A time in your life when somehow it all seems quite sensible to be driving something no larger than a Focus that has a 6.3 litre V8 shoehorned in up front. Something like this, the Mercedes C63 AMG. Hot hatches as a breed purport to replicate race and rally cars, though the reality is rather different. Not here it isn't. You can order one of these with as much, if not more power than the German DTM version. There's a race control start system to get you off the line faster than David Coulthard's competition car, and a seven speed auto gearbox with F1 style paddle shifters that blips Schumacher style on each perfect downshift. AMG was formed back in 1967 as an engineering office for the design and testing of racing engines and is still just as single-minded in its pursuit of a race car experience for the road. Of course, since then, the Afalterback business has been swallowed up by the might of Mercedes-Benz, a collaboration that began in earnest back in 1993 with another C-Class model, the C36. With that car, things began modesty enough with a six-cylinder engine offering just 236 brake horsepower. But the first of many V8 variants, the C43 of 1997, soon followed. An engine then supercharged in the C32 of 2001, then boosted further in the C55 of 2004. All very desirable machines, if you happen to have a tarmac airstrip in your backyard. On a snaking secondary road, most preferred a car that was fun as well as frightening. A car like BMW's M3. Only with the launch of this C63 AMG in 2007 was the Munich model properly targeted and very nearly beaten. A few remained to be convinced and it was to them that Mercedes addressed this revised version launched in mid-2011, at last available in coupe form as well as a saloon and an estate and further improved with a slick MCT7 automatic gearbox. Will it all be enough to at last take this car clear of its German arch rivals? I've come here with night falling to the test track at Mercedes-Benz World at Brooklands in Surrey and tomorrow we're going to find out. The prospect of a 6.3 litre V8 in a car this compact is one you can't help looking forward to. Embarrassingly out of kilter though it may be in these eco-conscious times. Now, Take a seat inside and there's just enough to keep the red mist coursing through your veins with the option of setting your C63 up just as a race driver would configure their car before taking to the track. Now, unlike Audi and BMW, Mercedes doesn't offer you a choice of settings that'll firm up the steering or adjust the dampers, all that's fixed. Nor, unlike larger AMG models, is there an extra AMG button to instantly summon your preferred state of tune. But don't worry, there's plenty else to play with. Take the AMG main menu in the central display, which offers a choice of three main modes. There's warm up, which shows engine oil and coolant temperature. Setup, which advises you which of the three stability uh, control system programs you've chosen. And race, which gives you a lap timer for uh, track days. 
And talking of racing, the gearbox has a, a race start function for perfect tyre smoking getaways. You'll want to keep to a minimum if you're not to smoke through expensive rubber on an embarrassingly frequent basis. So here, I'm going to fire the engine responsibly. Well, quite responsibly. Slot the gear stick into drive and see what this car can do. Now much of this will be determined by this unassuming little rotary knob down here. It determines no fewer than four different settings for the MCT7 Auto Gearbox. AMG engines develop far too much torque for the fitment of a normal manual stick shift. And it's this uh, new Auto Gearbox that's the main difference between this car and the pre-facelifted version. No, it's not a state-of-the-art twin clutch unit as you'd get from uh, Audi or BMW, but it's still a damnably efficient piece of technology. Now, most of the time, uh, you'll be leaving it in the C setting. C apparently stands for controlled efficiency. And uh, that's really the one for relaxed day-to-day -day motoring. In this mode, the car will uh, select second gear when you're moving away from rest, and it'll try to engage sixth gear whenever possible, even in town. Now, should the road open up sufficiently for you to let rip a little, you'll want to switch the rotary controller to the S, or Sport, setting, where the gear shifts are 25% quicker and uh, the car will hang on to the ratios for longer. Uh, a stage beyond that is S+, Plus, which you'd really only use on track or if you're in a really focused, empty, uh, twisting lane. For that, you've got really uh, focused down changes in just 100 milliseconds, to the point where, even for a pro driver, it's probably more effective than using the fourth M option, via which you can then change gear manually using these twin paddle shifters. So, there's a powerful engine with 600 newton meters of torque. It's got more pulling power than any rival a clever gearbox, um, a crackling exhaust note and plenty of drive gadgetry, but then that was to be expected. What's uh, unusual if for you uh, the letters AMG stand for absolutely monumental grunt and little else is the way that this car can be thrown ballistically down your favourite back road, especially in this coupe guise. Or the way that it can slingshot M3 like from bend to bend, lighting up the tarmac on a track day. Now I was shocked that AMG could achieve this with their SLS supercar for lottery winners. Now I realise that the Affolterbach engineers can achieve much the same thing for the merely very rich. It's taken them a couple of decades to get to this point, but the penny finally seems to have dropped that ultimate point-to-point -point speed is less about brute power and more to do with careful development of steering, suspension, brakes, even ESP stability control. All have been agonised over in this C63 and the results are awesome. Take the steering for example, it's an AMG sports setup and it produces a feel at the helm that's better than that of a BMW M3, which means it's very good indeed. The suspension too is bespoke to this car. It might be a little firm for some tastes, but it really keeps body roll very firmly in check. I wouldn't want the optional stiffer sports setup though. The brakes are powerful too, especially if you opt for the composite discs that I have here adding to peace of mind presided over by a three-stage ESP stability control system that you can set to, well, there are three settings. Uh, one is for on, for early intervention. Then there's off for top gear tail out slides. And sport, which provides a bit of a safety net, um, allows the car to get out of shape a bit, but it'll scoop you up if all else fails. Tire smoking has its place, of course. But when you're pressing on point to point, you'll want to do without it. So I'd counsel you to also tick the box for the AMG rear axle limited slip differential lock, a system which is able to apportion torque to the wheel with most traction when you're engaged in really hard cornering. And on the open road, well, 
Mercedes uh, AMG engineers say they don't actually know how fast this car's 457 braked horses would take you if you removed all of their speed limiters. Concerns over measuring this car's ultimate velocity uh, being due to alleged worries over the tyre's maximum speed rating. Yeah, right. Hints as to the contrary include this 200 mile an hour speedometer, which potentially you'll be able to exercise almost completely by opting for the driver's pack, which raises the maximum speed from 155 to 175 miles an hour. 60 for rest is delivered with a guttural bellow and occupies just 4.2 seconds, a figure you can reduce to just 4.1 seconds by opting for the extra cost performance package plus. That's what I've got fitted to this car. It um, raises the ultimate output by 30 brake horsepower to 487 bhp. But whether you opt for it or not, uh, overtaking punch is frantic. 60 to 160 miles an hour, taking less than 10 seconds. Truly supercar fast. Now, there isn't much subtlety about AMG's Sledgehammer V8 power plants, but at least the aesthetics of the company's models are a little less max power. So much so, in fact, that uh, the customer base actually asked for things to be dialed up a little on this front when it came to this C63. So we've got power bulges in the aluminium bonnet, uh, a redesigned front bumper, uh, flared wheel arches and a rear diffuser incorporating four prominent chrome tipped oval exhaust pipes. I've opted here for the coupe body style which joined the range at the time of the C63 facelift in mid 2011 and sits alongside the existing and continuing saloon and estate variants but looks a little meaner sitting 41 millimeters closer to the ground. For me, the nicest touch on the car is under the bonnet, where thanks to AMG's one man, one engine approach, uh, there's a chromed plaque that bears the signature of the engineer who created the power plant in question. The interior feels a more special place to be than any of its key rivals. You sit gripped by beautifully supportive leather sports seats and glimpse AMG branded dials through a flat bottomed three spoke leather and Alcantara trimmed sports steering wheel that feels great to hold. The brushed stainless steel pedals are well placed too. It's a beautifully conceived cabin, higher in class and smarter in feel than that of a BMW M3 or Audi RS5, thanks to carefully combined use of high gloss, matte and chromed and stainless steel finishes that make the high asking prices seem easier to bear. Not quite as impressive when it comes to this coupe model is the amount of legroom that you get when installed in one of the two individually sculpted sports seats here in the back. Now, while you could just about get away with calling an equivalent BMW or Audi a four-seater, this is better thought of as a two plus two with occasional space for adults, but comfortable room for children. The narrow aperture of these rear side windows does make it feel a bit enclosed back here too. I've no complaints about the boot though, very useful in size at 450 litres and further extendable if you're prepared to push forward the 60-40 split folding rear seats. Go for the saloon and the capacity rises to 475 litres, while it's 485 litres if you opt for the estate and that's extendable to 1500 litres if you push forward the 60-40 split folding rear seats. That's big enough to accommodate four golf bags with trolleys. <laughs> One man, one engine. I've come inside here at Mercedes-Benz World to find out the premium that you'll pay for such handcrafted excellence. Once upon a time, uh, you uh, were looking at uh, paying a slug more for a AMG Mercedes product than you would for a direct rival from BMW or Audi. 
it isn't true anymore. In fact, when this uh, revised C63 AMG was launched in mid-2011, it actually undercut a rival E90 series BMW M3 by uh, a few hundred pounds, and it was at least 1,500 pounds less than a comparable Audi RS5. But these are inconsequential differences when you're spending the best part of £60,000 on the automotive equivalent of a thug in a Savile Row suit. It's true, of course, that you can spend a lot less and go not much slower on an Audi S4, for example, at under £40,000. But then you can make that kind of argument about almost any high-end purchase. Opting for one of these buys you membership of a very exclusive club indeed. And it's a club uh, in which Mercedes now enjoys the widest choice of body style, thanks to the addition of a coupe variant to join the existing lineup of saloon and estate models, both of which uh, slightly undercut the two door body style in terms of upfront asking price. Whether you choose coupe, saloon, or estate, the 457 brake horsepower, 6.3 litre V8 installed up front is the same. And there's no choice of transmission option, there's no manual, uh, instead all uh, C63s get the same AMG Speedshift MCT7 unit. Now all of that of course is matched to a roster of equipment appropriate to a £60,000 powerhouse. On the coupe that means you get uh, 18 inch gorgeous AMG alloy wheels which you can upgrade to 19 inches if you want. You get a huge glass panoramic roof uh, you get intelligent by Xenon headlamps and there's uh, a sports exhaust with chrome tips on the tailpipes. Now inside you'll find uh, Alcantara and leather on the flat bottom three spoke sports steering wheel, black Nappa leather trim, an auto dimming mirror and heated seats as well as the expected executive niceties, things like Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, climate control, tyre pressure monitoring and auto dimming headlamps and wipers. You also get Mercedes superb command infotainment sat nav system that's voice controlled and upgradable to a 450 watt Harman Kardon surround sound system. Most buyers see this only as a starting point to which a whole host of performance options can be added. The most popular of which is the AMG Performance Package Plus, which uprates the engine output by 30 brake horsepower to 487 bhp, includes a composite braking system and also adds a couple of nice aesthetic details. The included carbon fiber boot lid spoiler will give this away to better informed enthusiasts as you rock it past. A pity also to do without the AMG rear axle limited slip differential lock able to distribute uh, torque to the wheel with most traction during really hard cornering. The AMG driver's package is also tempting. It uprates the maximum speed to 175 miles an hour and also includes driver training at an AMG power and passion event. I think twice though about uh, opting for the AMG performance chassis which uh, firms up the springs by 10%. For me, they're quite firm enough already. Safety, of course, is paramount if you're going to channel nearly 500 brake horsepower through only two driven wheels in a car that almost anyone with £60,000 in their sock drawer can just turn up and smoke away in. Now, Mercedes groups the main features together within a concept they call ProSafe, which aims to consider almost every aspect of safe driving. Now within this you get twin front airbags, a driver's knee bag and twin uh, side bags and window bags. You also get a braking system that uh, incorporates brake assist uh, to help the ABS in emergency stops that are advertised to following motorists by adaptive brake lights. And there's also the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control including a three-stage switchable ESP system. You also get attention assist that will monitor your driving and advise you if you need to stop and take a break. An intelligent light system offers five different lighting functions to suit different kinds of roads. And if all else fails, a pre-safe function will brace the car into the safest possible position for a crash if the electronics deem one to be inevitable. 
Extra cost safety features include um, active lane keeping assist to stop dozy drivers from drifting out of their lanes on the highway and active blind spot assist that'll stop you dangerously pulling out to overtake another car on the motorway. There's also a Distronic Plus system able to work with the cruise control to automatically regulate the distance that you have in front to the next vehicle for very safe high speed cruising. Now it's a pity that the twin turbo 5.5 litre V8 that has superseded this car's 6.3 litre V8 in larger AMG models. It's a pity it doesn't fit into this uh, car's engine bay. Apparently the side mounted turbochargers make it a few millimetres too wide. But if its installation in the larger E63 AMG is to be any guide, it wouldn't have made a huge amount of difference to this car's cost of ownership figures. However you slice it and dice it, this car will always be a very pricey thing to run. Now, the Stuttgart engineers insist that efficiency gains have been made over the last few years. The MCT7 gearbox alone is said to have improved fuel efficiency by up to 10%, but in the real world, you can't help thinking that not very much has changed. Even the notoriously optimistic official combined cycle fuel figure is down at 23.5 miles to the gallon, which in combination with the relatively small 66 litre fuel tank means that you're going to be on very friendly terms indeed with your local filling station. Now, um, according to the official figures, you could get around 340 miles as a range out of this car. But even if you don't drive like Jeremy Clarkson, you're very frequently going to find fuel consumption down at uh, the 10 to 13 miles to the gallon mark, which could make your day-to-day -day operating range in many instances below 200 miles. Now, it's true that this car's two most obvious rivals at launch, the E90 series BMW M3 and Audi's RS5, don't do a whole lot better, but they do significantly improve upon the figures returned by this car when it comes to CO2 emissions. Uh, this C63 can manage just 280 grams per kilometre, and in the estate version, uh, that rises to 288 grams per kilometre. So, choosing this model is going to mean a hefty benefit in kind tax liability. Still, you might claw some of that back when it comes to the ever strong residual values. Insurance groupings uh, range between 45 and 46. Without doubt, in this C63 AMG, Mercedes has produced a very special machine. On one hand, there's all the appeal of an old school muscle car. On the other, you've all the polish needed to face down the very best and most potent super saloons, the most extreme estates and the most crushingly powerful coupes that a five-figure sum will buy you. Rivals that uh, AMG engineers have finally learned to take on head-to-head. -head. With the coupe body style finally a part of the range, it's easier than ever before to judge this model on a level playing field against an M3, uh, an RS5 or just about anything else with close to 500 brake horsepower. And potential buyers uh, with around £60,000 to spend on the ultimate coupe, saloon or estate that don't will be doing themselves a disservice. Yes, it's firm, it's thirsty, it's even rather wild with all the electronics disabled, but then that's all part of its appeal. The best or nothing was always the Mercedes motto. At last, in this sector, this brand is delivering exactly that. <laughs>